today we live in a time of a world of revolution where comebacks are far and few in between. A failed comeback that has killed the hope and faith of a systematic structure that continues to oppress its people. We have witnessed the comeback of the celebration of discrimination, economic segregation in a country and have even public crucifixions of equity and justice. The embedded racism bias that lie dormant for in 72% of our so-called Christian brothers and sisters have made the comeback full force. The unwelcome boldness of hatred and clanism after 40 years of buried the purity of the gospel of Jesus Christ along with the greatest commandment to love thy God with all thy heart and to love thy neighbor. They roll back the stones of racism that have sealed with the laws of greed and Jim Crowism. On this Sunday morning, the last Sunday of 2018, we are witnesses to the resurrection and the ever present of domestic terrorism against our community, our women, our sons, our daughters, and even our churches. We hear talk about the end of the world more frequently than ever before. What was once a rumor, a war, whisper of academic and diseases, now natural disasters are more commonly, even weekly. The revolution says that the shots to come will be shots that will last forever. It's not a question about will it happen, it's when it would happen. We have the time where it's killed or be killed. I'll get mine, you get yours. We ponder the perplexity and imperil times where it's no guarantee if when you leave your house in the morning that you will make it back. It's no guarantee that you won't run up into an active shooter, not only on the school grounds or in the malls or in the movies or even up in here in New Providence. It's no guarantee that we have seen some of the horrific things that happen in our lifetime. But somehow in 2018 has been condensed to be not only a frequency, but a reality of a daily occurrence. Comebacks are hard. Comebacks are a hard struggle for some of us, if not all of us, because when the storm rages in your life and there's furious storm surges like Florence and Matthew that wipe out everything you had the day before, the fires rage on the West Coast that burn all your hopes, all your desires, and all your opportunity in one quick swoop. It's hard to wake up the next day with hope in your heart. It's hard to put your best shoes on and your best clothes on and put your best foot forward when trials and tribulations have showed up at your house. When death comes a knocking and sickness shows up, it's hard to muster up the energy to have a comeback. You need to find an answer somewhere, and somewhere is not anywhere. You look over to the side, to your left, and you look to the right for an answer to help you with the perfect question that plagues your heart and prompts in your mind is, how do I make my way from when devastation showed up in my house? I had a praise and a prayer and a testimony when it was somebody else in trouble. When they were sick, I said, pray about it. When they were down, I said, read your Bible. When they were not in the circumstance that I was in, I said, come to church. God would make a way out of no way. But when it's your turn to be on the slime line, when it's your turn to be in the firing squad, when it's your turn to be down and out, when it's your turn when sickness showed up, when it's your turn when death showed up, where is your comeback? It's your comeback ready and ready to be moved. It's your comeback full forth. But most of the time, we don't have a comeback. We can find answers to this question in the Bible. We go to the patriarch Job and he said, if a man die, he should live again. And that's a hard thing to accept because when you are dying... <laughs> You don't think about living again. You just think about getting past the pain, and you don't think about how you're going to have a comeback. But more specifically, the answer to the question is our own self-beings when it comes to coming back past our own struggles and our own terror. 
Some church member here this morning is pondering the same question about how they're coming back when their family is dying and their children and their relationship is dying and they're dying on their jobs and they're dying with opportunities and even the church that they come is dying. How can you come back when the pews are not filled like it was yesterday and our young people don't come back from the place where they first found Christ? How can you come back when churches don't get along and how can you come back when families don't get along and neighborhoods don't get along? How can you come back when things are stacked up against you that foils your attempt to come back? There's a hard, real lesson and question about this comeback. Well, my brothers and sisters, not the first time this question was posed to God. It's not the first time that a comeback had to be asked, how are we going to do it, Lord? Need I remind you of the dialogue between God and Ezekiel? The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out of of the spirit of the Lord and set me in the midst of a valley. It was full of dead bones and he caused me to pass by them around and behold there were very many and open in the valley and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, oh Lord God, you know most of us have been in some churches full of dead bones and we've been in some houses full of dead bones and we've been on some dead bone jobs and we've been in the valley of the shadow of death and we figure out that there might be a light of down at the end of the tunnel but I can't figure out how to make my way back to where God has brought me to and I left the place where I knew I had sanctuary to muster up my comeback. Comeback comes with some crisis and comeback comes with some circumstances, but comeback also comes with some praises and promises. The question is that you don't know how to come back. You don't know where to begin when you had your own setback. Your failures and your falls in 2018 will shape your 2019. I don't care how holy you are. I don't care how many times you showed up in Bible study or you showed up at church. There are some things that will knock you flat off your feet. Some sickness will wipe you out. Some check bounce will kick you into a bankrupt spiral. Sometimes you can make the wrong choice, go down the wrong road, and end up ending in a place of darkness, and you don't know how to get yourself out of it, and you're stuck in 2018, but there is a comeback to your story. There is a comeback. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what the world said you cannot do. You got to come back. You got to come back in you because you know the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have a relationship with him, you're guaranteed a comeback. Look to your neighbor and say, I got to come back. I got to come back. I might have been down in 2018, but I got to come back. I, don't count me out because I got to come back. Our Lord and Savior Jesus was stretched wide and knelt to the cross on a hill called Calvary. The Bible said when Jesus was lifted up, he drew all men unto himself. The crowd gathered not to see a comeback, but they asked for a come down. They didn't even encourage him to keep coming back on the third day, but told him to come down off that cross. I'm so glad he stayed on the cross, Pastor. I'm so glad he didn't come down because he waited on his comeback. I'm so glad that when he bled, he bled for me and he stayed there. God. The truth be known is that he stayed and shed his blood and died on the cross for all of us this morning. But the trick to be known and what was twisted about this situation that even in 2018, some of us was lifted up with hope. Some of our dreams was lifted up and our outlook in life was lifted up and our job opportunity was lifted up, but somehow down the road, the mountain paradise at the top became a cliff. And while we was on the cliff, somebody pushed us off. Sickness pushed some of us off and depression pushed us off the cliff and financial crisis pushed us off the cliff. Storms pushed us off the cliff. Trials pushed us off the cliff. Sickness pushed us off the cliff. Death 
pushed us off the cliff. Broken hearts pushed us off the cliff. Abuse picked us off the cliff. Even your families and friends forsook you when you was hanging on the cliff. And just like Jesus, you experienced the same thing. People praised you in the beginning of 2018. They threw you a party in the beginning of 2018. They celebrated while in 2018. But halfway through the year, <laughs> when you didn't have enough money in your bank account and your car broke down and you got a little bit sick and you didn't look your best in the middle of 2018, your friends became very few. And then when you suffered your crucifixion, you suffer your own crucifixion. They said, well, maybe it was the sins of your father, the sins of your mother, because you didn't show up to church enough. When you was crucified on your heel, the same one who celebrates you, doubt that you ever come back from that situation. They doubt that you ever make it back. We all have those moments where we're on top of the world. And everybody likes us. But the moment trouble shows up, they scatter and run. The moment things get hard and you got to roll up your sleeve and make your way out of no way and you got to rub two pennies together and hope that you can make a nickel out of what you find between the couch cushions and then they don't want to show up for you. Well, I know you're in the house because they might be sitting beside you. You don't want to look at them because they left you hanging high and dry. But the God that we serve is able. We've all been through some things. And right now, deep within your senses, you really don't believe you have a comeback. The obstacles are too high. They, the price is too hard and you're struggling to think that I don't know if I'm going to make it to watch night service tomorrow night. I don't know if I'm going to have a job when I get back. I, I don't know if my house payment check is going to pass when I get back next week. If it's not going to bounce, I don't know if my car is going to get repo. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't think I have the strength to make it tomorrow. Oh, I know you look good and you dressed up in your best Christmas clothes, but deep inside you're struggling. You cannot live in this world and not have struggle. Christ said you will always have trials and tribulation. But I'm here to tell you on this last Sunday of the year, you got to come back. You got to come back. And here's the first lesson. You must understand and realize Everyone won't believe you'll come back. When people witness your crucifixion, those who cheer for you and even those who are close to you will scatter away because they don't believe you can come back. When you look good, had a little bit of money in your pocket, and was climbing up the ladder of success, of success, the crowd praises and cheers lift you up. <laughs> when you had your muscles, your fine shape, you just walked in the room and people flocked around you like paparazzi. But when gravity showed up and the makeup didn't work anymore, you couldn't find a wig to make you look youthful anymore. The gators and the Stacey Adams didn't fit anymore. And you lost your sex appeal. You realize the scattering was taking place. I can imagine that Friday night club scene in Jerusalem. <laughs> the conversation was buzzing about Jesus being the new king. And I'm sure he had the 
latest rock stars playing on their courts about how they were going to take over the world. I'm sure he had his own Beyonce and his Jay-Z playing all the harps and the cymbals down in Jerusalem. But at noonday, <laughs> when the host was strung up on the cross, the same party people left him standing. And even though they had been with him all three years, one event made them decide that he didn't have a comeback. Not only that, they determined that it was impossible for him to come back. What event in your life that made your friends, your family, your church members to say they'll never come back from that? What did you do that wasn't as holy as your neighbor? That folks wrote you off. Oh, I know I'm in the house. Because I look back over my life and people have wrote me off just because I didn't chew bubble gum the right way. Can you imagine the time when you need people the most? It's the time that they kick you to the curb. Don't wait for people to believe in your comeback. Because most people won't believe you're going to come back. Get sick on your job. Stay out too long on your job. They'll push somebody right in it. Uh, Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. First lesson, everyone won't believe you will come back. Number two, believe it and speak it. Believe it and speak it. Here's the second lesson. Your comeback is not predicated on what others say or believe. But it is possible based on what you say and your belief in Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches us to speak things into existence. If we believe in Christ, all things are possible. Comebacks are possible. In fact, they happen all the time. Yet, if you had a setback, a comeback might seem impossible to you. Life is full of setbacks. No matter how long you live, no matter how young you are or how old you are, you're going to wake up with some setbacks. You're going to have financial problems. You're going to have health issues. You're going to go through some heartaches and some pain. You might have sickness show up in your house. You might have death to knock on your door. So no matter how long you live or how quick you live, as long as you're on this side of glory, you're going to have some setbacks. But some setbacks might be our own mentality. Where we don't believe that we ourselves are able to overcome whatever setback we're in. It's not your job. It's not your family. It's not the preaching of the church. It's you. <laughs> you are the reason. <laughs> Why are you catching hell in 2018? You are the reason. Why your stuff so jacked up? You are the reason why you can't get your health right. You are the reason 
why you can't get your mind right. You are the reason why you stuck in a box and can't get out. You are the reason. Why? Because you have decided that this setback is permanent. Only you and your road dogs put a seal on the permanency of your setback. And you make the scriptures a lie. Because the God I serve says that all things are possible. He didn't say if you were sick, I would not heal you. Matter of fact, he says even if you are dead, <laughs> I can still call your name. Oh, y'all don't hear that because even if you are buried in your tomb, he can call your name. Setbacks always begins with change. Setbacks never happen in a stagnant position. If you're stagnant, you're already in it. If you're stagnant, you already boxed in a setback. But if you're moving, setback shows up. If you want to change your setback, you must first change your mind. Unless you change your present of how you do things, you're always going to remain the same because doing the same thing over and over and over and over again and expecting a different result is insanity. I don't care if you read that I will be loose book. I don't care if you download all these books about how to have the, the 10 effective leadership habits or the 7 habits of a good church person. Unless you put it into action. You just paying Amazon CEO salary. You must be willing to do things differently. Not from the past. But at the point of your setback. We make the mistake of looking too far back back pastor for a current day setback yesterday's or last year's setback remedy will not work for a last Sunday 218 setback your setbacks aren't stupid <laughs> your setbacks knows its own strategy. When the enemy attacked you last year and you overcame that, he's not coming with the same trick. But we go back to last year. We bring our knives to a gunfight. You must change your mindset. It's like uh, these sports fans, you know, they're always celebrating the underdog. Don't even like the team. But, but if Vegas says that they're the underdog, they, they pick them. I don't know why, but they pick the underdog. Sometimes, we cheer for other underdogs. Even if we don't even know them, I never even heard about them. But when you are the underdog, you don't even pray for yourself. <laughs> Boy, it's last Sunday. Y'all must be ready to go home. Okay. 
a truth known that not everyone's going to believe in your comeback. And another is that you don't believe. And you don't speak it. But that's okay. Don't worry about it. Because my third point is that when you can't, Christ can. <laughs> when you can't, Christ can. The third lesson is that when you can't come back, Christ will come back to bring you back even if he has to carry you back. Let me say it again. Christ will come back to bring you back even if he has to carry you back. <laughs> oh, can I get a witness in the house? When you look back over your life, what God has brought you from, I guarantee you none of you all was looking for Christ. <laughs> you were stuck in your wicked ways and you was having the best time in that little old box club and you were doing the best you could with all the joy of the sin that you had and if God had not came and got you and pulled you out of the merry clay and placed your feet back on the solid rock you would have never experienced a comeback you didn't come back Willie. it won't you that decide you woke up one morning that you had to just show back up at church God showed up in your mess and God showed up and disrupt what you had going on. God went into that back room. God went while you was tipping and dipping. God showed up when you didn't want him to be there. He was in your bedroom. He was in your living room. He was in your boo house. He was in your babe house. It was then that the Holy Spirit convicted your crazy self and made you realize you better get your life right. Oh, we walk up in church so holy, I decided to follow Jesus. He was on my mind. Lie. Because if you had decided, you wouldn't have been in the mess that you were in when Jesus saved you. So often it seems that the devil is attacking us. He is. And it's hard for us to bring the daylight at the end of the tunnel. Setbacks usually carry us just outside the promised land. Hear me clear. Setback comes during the darkest part of the night, but right before dawn. Setback comes before the corner of your breakthrough. Setback comes when you're about to touch your blessing. Setback comes when God is about to pour out upon your life. Setback shows up when you run out of your own strength. Setback comes when you have given up on your own self. But God said he needs to get you in your complete weakness so that his strength is made perfect. We have all sinned and come short of God's grace through the faith of Jesus Christ. And we have made some comebacks in our time. If the person beside you knew what you have come back from, they wouldn't sit beside you. If they knew where you used to hang out at and how hateful you used to talk and what you used to carry in your purse in your pocket, they'd be scared to sit beside you. If they knew what you used to do in the parking lot before you came to church and what you did on Saturday night before you got in here Sunday morning, they'd think they were too holy to sit beside you, but God knows. He knows that no matter where you are, when you are there, if you're his, he knows his sheep voice. He's willing to leave this pretty sanctuary 
and go find just one of us lost sheep. Because he knows that during the trials of our life, you're guaranteed to have a setback. But 1 Corinthians 15 said, but thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible is full of folks who fell short in their comeback story. You mind me calling the roll real quick? Don't forget about Moses. Although he was a murderer and a fugitive, obscure shepherd for 40 years, he still had a last comeback. He came back to free his fellow Israelites from slavery from Egypt and led them to the borders of the promised land. David had a setback. He slept with another man's wife and manipulated him to death. And, but it was God who orchestrated his comeback. And he came back completely to being still a man after God's own heart. And for those y'all said, I did everything right and copacetic and I'm like Joseph. But even the good Christians get thrown into the cistern. It won't because you did anything wrong. It won't because you didn't read your Bible. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. And when you get so high and mighty, say, Lord, why me? I did all the right things. I raised my kids. I didn't sleep with nobody else's wife or husband. I didn't cuss nobody out today. And life throws you a boom upside the head. And you want to, why old me? And God said, because it's your turn. But even with Joseph being in prison falsely and been accused falsely and suffered injustice, God still had a comeback. And even our faithful Job, even though he lost everything, lost his family, lost his livestock, lost his house, lost his health, even though he did not do anything against God, God still gave him a comeback. Comeback stories are inspired throughout the Bible and throughout our sports world and our historical world. But there's only one great comeback of all times. Jesus was the most important person who ever lived and his life, death, and resurrection literally changed the course of human history. Jesus was guilty of no crime and had done incredible good work and yet he was crucified. Most of the painful and horrendous death in ancient time was the crucifixion on the cross. There was no greater setback in the world when they strung him high and strung him wide and they knelt him on a cross on a hill called Calvary. The setback was so great that the earth shook and the church veil split and people scattered all around the world. The setback was so great that the, the moon turned to blood and the sun stopped shining there was a huge setback all night Friday. The setback was so great that even on Saturday, folks stayed in their house and didn't go back to church. There was no early morning service on church on that Sunday morning. There was no praise going on. There was no choir singing. The deacons didn't have a meeting. No trustees wrote a check because of a setback. And even those who had believed for over 2,000 plus years before that there would come one who would free the world. They didn't believe that he could come back. They believed that he would come back. They thought that he was done and it was final on the cross. And even here in the last Sunday of 2018, some of y'all friends and family don't believe that you're going to come back in 2019. They think that your hope is going to die in 2018. Your dreams would die in 2018. Your finances would dry in 2018. Everything you worked for would die in 2018. But praise be to God. You got to come back. You got to come back. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they do. The God that we serve, that you got to come back. How do I know you got to come back? Because early on Sunday morning, the same one that said he'll come and get you, said I can't stay down here always. Because in 2018, somebody needs a comeback. Somebody needs a healing. Somebody needs a breakthrough. Somebody needs deliverance. Because of you, 
he's coming back. <laughs> because of you, he's coming back. And if he comes back for you, guess what? You got to come back. <laughs> you can come back from anything. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You may walk through the shadow of the valley of death, but guess what? You're going through. <laughs> Sickness may come upon you, but guess what? By his stripes, <laughs> you are healed. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the judge said. I don't care what your wife said. I don't care what your husband said. I don't care what your family say. If God be for you, <laughs> he's more. He's more. He's more. He's more than the world against you. Oh, the song said, I never would have made it. <laughs> I never would have made it. Never could have made it without you. <laughs> I have been lost all. I would have not made it if God had not been on my side. You have a comeback.